In this video we're going to look at evaluating formulas. We'll look at a pension formula on page one. Um, we'll look at a perimeter on page two. And on page three we'll use this formula to find x when y is this number and to find y when x is that number. Okay, so that's page three. Okay, so starting on page one, here is a, a typical state pension where your monthly pension payment is 2% times your average monthly salary times the number of years you were employed and you might get that when you're say 65 years of age or something like that so that's a typical state pension now let's write a formula for this pension plan because one of the reasons for having algebra is so instead of writing words we can write letters now the first people to uh, use algebra wrote words and that was actually in Iraq, in Babylon, or uh, Mesopotamia. And in any case, um, uh, so it, it's just kind of easier to, to write letters instead of words. So you can come up with any letters you want for these words. We've got one, two, three variables here. Three, uh, your monthly pension payment, your average monthly salary, and the number of years you were employed. Okay. So for a monthly pension payment, I'm just going to make up a letter. I'll just make up P. Okay, now I'm also going to write 2% as a fraction. Okay, 2% as a fraction. 2% is 2 per 100. Percent means per 100. Divide by 100, per 100. Okay, and 2 over 100 is what as a decimal? 2 hundredths. It's 0. Point what? 0. Point 0.02 because we have whole numbers tenths and then hundredths. So hundredths are over here. Okay. So I'm going to change the 0.2% to 0 0.02 so that I can calculate with it. Average monthly salary. You could write A or M or S or whatever. Uh, let's put in um, just for fun M I guess for the monthly salary and then number of years employed. You could put N or Y or whatever. Uh, I'm just going to pick Y. So now I've just one thing I wanted to show you is the whole point of using letters is so you don't have to write words. But but remember that all letters do actually represent words. But it's just simpler to write it like that. It's it's look like, look how simpler it is, right? And it's easier to calculate them with the letters, you know. So that's the point of algebra. So if your average monthly salary was three thousand dollars and you were employed for twenty years, find your monthly pension payment. Okay. So I want you to write down the formula, and just for fun, instead of using the parentheses for multiplying, let's just write P equals 0.02MY, okay? My. Anyway, um, and when you write the letters beside each other, it, it just means multiply. So you don't actually need the parentheses, so you can write them in if you want. Um, and by the way, you don't have to write out this whole sentence here. Just write P equals 0 0.2 MY, monthly salary times years employed, right? Okay. And um, we're just going to plug in the numbers. So it's going to be 0 0.02 and M was what? Month, um, ba -da -ba -ba, average monthly salary, right? $3,000. So M was the average monthly salary. So we can plug that in for M, 3,000, right? And Y was the number of years. You're employed for 20 years, right? Put 20 here, okay? And just assume you're retired 65 and all that stuff, right? And um, what would your monthly, the P is going to be your monthly pension payment. So let's figure that out. So all we have to do is multiply these now, right? So um, I'm just going to do the arithmetic. I'm going to go multiply the 0 0.02 times 3,000 just for fun. 3,000 times 0 0.02. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 3 is 6. And I have one, two decimal places in the, que in the question. So I must have one, two decimal places in the answer. So I get 60. Point zero zero or just 60 okay so when I multiply these two guys I got 60 now times it by 20 what's 60 times 20 what's 2 times 6 
it's 12, and we have two zeros, so 1200. Zero, zero. So that means your P, or your monthly pension payment, right? P, monthly pension payment, is $1,200. So you've gone from having a salary of $3,000, you work 20 years, and now when you retire at 65, you get $1,200 each month. Okay, you may not be able to live off that, so you might want to work longer, um, and hopefully you'll also get Social Security. That's the idea if that that people get, you know, sometimes a, a pension from their job and also Social Security, which keeps them keeps them going. Hopefully. So anyway, um, let's see. So here's an interesting question. Like if you just forget about Social Security for now, and imagine you were just surviving off a pension like that. How many years would you need to work to receive the same income at retirement? So we saw how this pension, if, if you're getting 3000 a month and then you retire, all of a sudden you only get 1200 right? And now the question is, well, how long, and I worked for 20 years, right? Well, how long would I have to work to actually get the same amount at retirement, right? So let's figure that out with the formula. We'll write down the formula for the pension. It's P equals... 0 0.02 times the monthly uh, average monthly salary times the number of years worked. Okay. Funny thing about this question is we're not given any numbers, right? <laughs> so um, you could make numbers up if you wanted to. That's one way of doing it. But what we're looking for is why. How many years? We're actually trying to find why. And the funny thing about this particular question is we don't have any numbers for P and M. But what does it mean when it says you want to receive the same income? Receive the same income means that the monthly pension payment, you want that to be the same as your average monthly salary that you got when you retired, right? So to make it the same, we could just make up any numbers at all. You could call P and M both 1000 or you could call them both 2,000 or 3,000 or whatever. But as long as you make these numbers the same, then that satisfies the question. So you make them both 5,000, make them both 3,000, make them both whatever, right? So just pick any number you like and plug it in. I'm just going to pick, uh, I'll just pick 4,000 just for fun, right? So I'm going to say that my month, the month, your monthly, um, Average monthly salary is four thousand, right? And you want your pension to also be four thousand, right? So four thousand equals zero point zero two times four thousand times y. And we we're trying to find y. Notice now that we have an equation with only one letter. If you have an equation with just one letter or one missing number, you can find the missing number. Okay. So if we calculate this. We get 4,000, right, equals, what's 0 0.02 times 4,000? You can plug it in the calculator, but it's, I mean, we really need to be able to do some arithmetic. I mean, 4,000 times 0 0.02 is what? Well, 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 0 is 0. 2 times 4 is 8. See? There are two decimal points in the question, so there's going to be 2 in the answer. That gives 80. 80.00 or just 80, right? So we have 80 times y. Does that make sense? Now we're solving an equation, we've got to find y. We have 80 multiplied by y. How would you get y by itself? To get y by itself, divide both sides by 80. Okay? And so on the right we'll get y, and on the left we have 4,000 over 80. If you divide the top and bottom by 10, the zeros cross cancel. Now, 8 into 8 goes one time. What's 8 into 40? Tell me what's 8 into 40. 8 into 40 goes 5 times, and 8 into 0 goes 5 times. So this, anyway, whatever way you do it, 4,000 over 80 simplifies to 50 over 1. Okay, so you end up with y equals 50. Now what did y represent? 
We said that the monthly pension payment is 2% times the average monthly salary times number of years employed. Y represents years employed. Y is 50 years. Okay. So how does that relate to our question? To our question, it says, how many years would you need to work to receive the same income at retirement? If the percentage is 2%, that means you're going to have to work for 50 years to receive the same income at retirement. In other words, you won't, and nobody does at this, because who works 50 years, right? Anyway, let's move on to the next question. Next page. We're going to look at perimeter, right? First thing I want you to do, first thing I want you to do is find a formula for the perimeter of a rectangle. So we're going to find, don't, uh, by the way, you don't have to write all these words down, just, just do what, what it says. So you're going to find a formula for the perimeter of a rectangle. So draw a rectangle. That's the first step. Draw it. Here's a rectangle. See it? Okay. And I'm just going to make up some numbers. If the width was 3, then the width over here would be 3, wouldn't it? And if this length was um, 7, then this length would also be 7. Okay. Now tell me, what's the perimeter of that? What's the perimeter of that rectangle? Isn't it all of the sides added up together, right? So isn't it 3 plus 7 plus 3 plus 7? Add them all up, and that's your perimeter, right? You could also say 3 plus 3, 2 widths, right? And 7 plus 7, couldn't you? 2 widths and 2 lengths, does that make sense? Right. So that's 6 and 14, which is, what's 6 plus 14? Is that 20? Right. So the perimeter is 20 inches, meters, whatever it is, I don't know, kilometers, miles, 20 somethings. Point is, 3 plus 3 is 2 threes, isn't it? Isn't 3 plus 3 2 times 3? It's the same thing, isn't it? How about 7 plus 7? 7 plus 7 is 2 times what? 2 times 7. See? So, do you agree with me that the perimeter for this rectangle is twice the width plus twice the length? It's two widths and two lengths, isn't it? Right? Let's draw another one. Here it is. It has a width of W. Okay, instead of a number, I'm going to use a letter and it has a width of W over here, right? It has a length of L, here and here. Okay. What's the perimeter? The perimeter is the distance all the way around the rectangle. This length, this length, this, this side and this side. All four sides added up together. If you go all the way around, that's the perimeter. So if you walk all the way around the sports field, that's the perimeter. If you measure all the way around your laptop, that's the perimeter. If you measure all the way around the rectangular piece of paper, that's the perimeter. Okay. So the perimeter is this length, which is W, plus this length, which is L. But most students stop there. They say the perimeter is the width plus the length, and that's it. Is the perimeter really just width and length? See, that's only half of the rectangle, isn't it? You can't just add these two. You gotta add. What about the other two, right? You gotta add this width and this length as well, right? Does that make sense? So you gotta add width and length and then width and length again. So it's W plus L plus W plus L. If you add like terms there, what do you get? Add like terms and what do you get? See the width and the width, that's like one one W and one W. Width and width makes two widths, right? How about L plus L? What does L plus L make? It makes 2L. So the perimeter of a rectangle is 2W plus 2L. Does that make sense? So I can write perimeter is 2W plus 2L, or 2L plus 2W, same thing, right? Okay, so find W if the length of a sports field is 150 meters and the perimeter is 440 meters. 
So once you write down the formula, P equals 2L plus 2W, we just found that and we understand it, right? Find W if the length of a sports field is 150 meters and the perimeter is 440. Okay, so I'm going to do this by algebra, but I mean, for goodness sakes, not drawing this is just so, to me it's just so crazy to actually not even draw a box. Look, it doesn't take long. There's a box, done. There's a rectangle, right? What is it telling us? The length is 150. Why don't we just write this? Look, 150 here, 150 here. See, it makes a lot more sense now, doesn't it? Right? So there's something about actually drawing the box, and you can see the length is 150. And we want to find what, what the width is. And there's a, there's a width here and here. See, there's a width on both sides, and we know all the way around is 440. So all the way around is 440, right? In any case, part of the lesson is to practice plugging in numbers. So perimeter is 440 means in place of P you can put 440. Does that make sense? It tells us that the length is 150. So in place of length you can put 150. See that? So length is 150, perimeter is 440, and then we complete the equation and write 2W. And the trick is if you have an equation with everything is numbers and there's just one letter then you can use algebra to find the letter okay which is what we've been practicing for a while now okay so let's go ahead and solve this can you press pause and solve this equation by yourself go ahead and press pause and solve that equation we've had lots of practice on that okay I'll do it now so 440 equals 2 times 150 300 right plus 2w so what did you do next? Subtract 300, right? And you get 140 equals 2w, 2 times the width. Now what? Divide by 2, and you get what? 70 equals w. Width equals 70. So this is 70, and this is 70. And does that all work out? So if you add it all up together, 150 plus 150, and then 70 plus 70, does that work out? So this would be 300. What's 70 plus 70? 140, and when you add them together, what do you get? you get 440, right? So it all works out. So the width is 70. Anyway, nice bit of practice. So we're going to do this one now. Find L if the width of a laptop is 10 inches and the perimeter is 52. So write down the formula P equals 2L plus 2W. Plug in the numbers that you can plug in. So what's L and what's P, right? what's W? I guess this time it said the width is 10, didn't it? It said the width is 10, right? And the perimeter is 52. So in place of P we're going to write 52, right? And we're trying to find L. So we don't know L, so it's 2L plus what do you write down now? 2 times the width, what's the width? It said the width is 10. There we go, there's the width is 10, right? So go ahead and solve the equation. You're trying to find L. You have an equation, everything is a number apart from this one letter here. We just have one letter, L, see that? If you have an equation with just one letter, you can solve it. So go ahead and press pause in the video and solve the equation. Okay, I hope you press pause and tried it. I'll go over it now. We got 52 equals 2L plus 20. I hope you subtracted 20 from both sides. And you might have got 32 equals 2L. And then you divided both sides by 2 and you got 16 equals L. Right? Right, so that's solving the equation. L equals 16. And when we check the whole thing out, uh, draw a little rectangle here. Here's your laptop. The width is 10. 
So the width on both sides is 10, not just one side. The length is 16. Now, does that all add up to 52 or not? Tell me. Is the perimeter 52? Is it? Well, 16 plus 16, and then we got 10 plus 10. If we add the two lengths, 16 and 16 is 32. If you add the two widths, 10 and 10 is 20. What's 50 or 32 plus 20? That's 52, isn't it? Right, so it all worked out. Now let's have a look at page 3. Bum, bum, bum. Use this formula, 3x minus 7y equals negative 6, to find x when y is negative 2, and then we're going to find y when x is 5. So let's start with one thing at a time. Find x when y equals negative 2. What that means is we need to take y equals negative 2. We need to plug that in for y. See that? We need to plug that in there. right? So we're going to write out the formula again. 3x minus 7. But we're going to plug in negative 2 in place of y. Does that make sense? So this is called plugging in. Our students like to call this plugging in. Notice that when we plugged in negative 2 for y, we're left with an equation that just has one letter in it. What letter do we have now? What variable? We just have x. So all we have to do is solve that equation for x. And it's so cool that you guys did so much practice on solving equations because you're going to be using that practice over and over. And so a lot of what you'll do will seem like a bit of a review because it's just negative numbers solving equations we've done all before, which is great. So please press pause and solve that equation. So negative 7 times negative 2 is positive 14. Write down plus 14. Did you get that? Hope you press pause and try this yourself now. So again, press pause and keep going from here if you haven't done it yet. Give your answer as a mixed number and an improper fraction. So to get x by itself, we subtract 14, right? 14 minus 14 is 0. We have 3x equals negative 20. Okay, now divide both sides by 3 we get x equals negative 20 thirds, 20 over 3. What's that as a mixed number? 3 into 20 goes how many times? If you know your 3 times tables, 3 into 20 goes 6 times, and it's a negative number. What's the remainder? See, 3 6's is 18. 20 minus 18 See, 20 minus 18 is 2. So it's 6 and 2, remainder 2. So 6 times remainder 2, so 6 and 2 thirds. So the answer is negative 20 thirds or negative 6 and 2 thirds. Right? Find y when x equals 5. I'm just going to write out the formula again. You can too. If you want 3x minus 7y equals negative 6. This didn't take long. Now, find y when x equals 5. Please try to take the first step yourself. What would you do? It says x equals 5. We've got to plug 5 in somewhere. Where would you plug in 5? You take the 5 and you plug it in for x. See that? So we go 3 times 5 minus 7y equals negative 6. Okay. That will give us 15 minus 7y equals negative 6. Right? Now we have an equation with just one letter. And that one letter is y. We've got to solve the equation for y. What should we do next? Take the next step. y has been multiplied by a negative 7. Remember, not positive 7. That's a negative 7. 
and then 15 is being added. If you don't believe me, change this subtraction to plus negative and see what it looks like. If you change that subtraction to plus negative, it says 15 plus negative 7 times y. So now I hope you believe me that y is actually being multiplied by a negative 7 and then 15 is being added. right? So to undo adding 15 we actually subtract 15 from both sides. What does that give us on both sides? Write down each side. 15 minus 15 is 0. On the left we don't have 7y. What do we have on the left? And it's not 7y, it is negative 7y. Okay. What do we have on the right? That's a negative 6 minus 15. 6 bad guys and 15 bad guys. You're in debt by $6. You spend $15. How far are you in debt now? You're in debt by 21. Okay. It's negative 7 times y. We've got to undo multiplying by negative 7. So if we divide by negative 7 on both sides, what do we get? On the left, it's negative over negative, positive. 7 over 7, 1. And then we still have y, positive 1y. Or y equals negative over negative, positive, and 21 over 7, positive 3. y equals 3. Okay.